All right, in this short video, we're going to be talking about exponential smoothing. And exponential smoothing is a quantitative method. It falls in the time series uh, type of forecasting models. And it's a really useful and easy forecasting method uh, where we can apply a smoothing constant to future periods forecast. So all we're doing is applying an alpha or a smoothing constant to the previous period. And that's how we go about forecasting future periods. So. Exponential smoothing is a weighted moving average forecasting technique in which data points are weighted by an exponential function. The forecast smooths out the irregular functions in time. So you can see the on the screen, you've got your formula for exponential smoothing. And in this formula, f of t is your new forecast for period t. f t minus 1 is your previous periods forecast. A t minus 1 is your previous period's actual demand. And then a, or your lowercase a, that alpha on there, is your smoothing constant. Your smoothing constant has to be between 0 and 1. Okay, It has to be between 0 and 1. It cannot be a negative number. And then a minus f, both uppercase, that's your error term. That's your actual minus forecast. So that's your a minus f. So Here's your formula for exponential smoothing. What exponential, oh, one thing about exponential smoothing, uh, you do not need to learn exponential smoothing with trend adjustment. Um, right now in the textbook, that is page 120, I believe. You do not need to know that, so we're just gonna go over exponential smoothing, but you don't have to uh, learn how to do it with trend adjustment. Okay, so the effect of the smoothing constant, let's talk about that alpha for a second. So if your alpha is close to zero, Okay, if your alpha is close to zero, you're going to smooth out or get closer to making an average. Okay, so if you do that, you choose a low value or a low alpha when your underlining demand or sales are stable. So if you want something to be close to the average, you choose an alpha closer to zero. If your alpha is closer to one, so if you pick one that's closer to one, that's really close to your naive forecast where you're going to get really close to the previous period's demand. So your alpha of one is your naive. You choose that when your demand or your sales or whatever you're trying to forecast is likely to change when there's a little bit more volatility. So the closer to one, if there's more volatility, closer to zero, if you're good with averages. The objective, just like I was talking about in our last video with moving averages, is you want to get to the most accurate forecast, no matter the technique. So in the example I'm going to show you in two slides from now, um, maybe they feel like the alpha that they've picked works for them, but we don't know because we don't have historical data. So it doesn't seem like they're going to get very close, but maybe they're okay with that because historically we don't know if they just had a really good month. So you, when you're in operations and you're working in forecasting, it is your job to get to as close um, to having an accurate forecast as possible. So you're going to have to do some trial and error and changing your smoothing constant, changing your alpha, will help you to make a really good forecast. So um, what we're trying to achieve is the lowest forecasting error, and so uh, the smoothing constant is a great way to do that, especially if we don't have a whole lot of data, because we only look at the previous period's data. So here's the impact of that smoothing constant. You can see in this example, uh, demand goes down, and then demand goes up, and then it goes down again. So you can see there's this, you know, this line of, of down, up, down. Sure, there's a little bit of a trend of things going up, but in general, it has gone down, then up, then down. And so um, when picking that alpha, if you pick an alpha that's close to zero, all it's doing is taking this average. Okay, so you're gonna be off in quarter three, you're gonna be off in quarter six, but in general, you're okay because you're just taking an average. So with an alpha close to zero, you're smoothing it out, you're making it uh, pretty much an average. If you were to pick a alpha closer to one, then it would be more responsive to the changes. So you can see it went down faster and then it went up faster. So with a smoothing constant of 0.5 in this example, it, it was more responsive and that's what a closer to one alpha will do. It will adjust quicker to changes in demand. So let's do an example together of exponential smoothing. In January, a car dealer predicted February demand for 142 Ford Mustangs. 
actual February demand was 153 cars. Using a smoothing constant chosen by management of an alpha of 0.2, the dealer wants to forecast March demand using the exponential smoothing model. Okay, so they have cho chosen an alpha of 0.2. So they are okay with it being pretty close to the average. What that tells me with the point two, where they, where they want it to be smooth, they want it to be close to the average. Just looking at this with 142 Mustangs sold in January and then 153 sold in February, to me, that means they had a really great February. It was a little bit of an outlier. They don't want to start predicting demand to be closer to that 153 they feel like 142 is a safer or smarter forecast, so they're choosing a lower alpha. But I digress. Let's, let's figure out when we use that alpha of 0.2, what will our forecast be going forward for March? So doing that is simple. All we do is we take the March forecast to calculate our March forecast. We've got our predicted February demand of 142 plus our actual February demand of 153, so 153 minus the 142, which was our predicted demand. We will multiply that number by our 0.2 smoothing constant. And so 0.2 multiplied by 153 minus 142 gives us 2.2, and we add that to 142, which was our predicted February demand. So going forward for March, all we're going to do is forecast 144 cars. So we're going to add a little bit of demand on from our February to get to our March with a relatively low smoothing constant of 0.2. And that's it for exponential smoothing. It's a uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, you can play around with various alphas, uh, making them closer to zero or closer to one, depending on what you're trying to achieve. But it's a very useful tool, especially when you don't have a whole lot of historical data.